I traveled to Chicago to meet with Violet Gergich, proprietor and vice president of Gergich Hills Estates, an iconic Napa Valley winery, for the celebration of 35th anniversary of the Great Chicago Chardonnay Showdown, which brought her father, Mike Gergich, the triumphant victory of Gergich Hills Chardonnay and his title, King of Chardonnay. I wanted to know, how does a daughter of a man with such a big dream coming true live her own dream while carrying on her father's legacy? I'm Tai Chi. At 19, I was a superstar and I was lost inside. I left it all behind, switched continents and started all over. Years later, I found myself lost again, this time in the American dream. This is a story about awakening, about living the life you were created for, about going inward and discovering the joyous and purposeful person you and I are both meant to be. This is Waking Up in America. Violet Gergich, thank you so much for being here on Waking Up in America. I am so excited and so honored to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. So we're in this beautiful Drake Hotel mm -hmm. in Chicago, mm -hmm. and tonight we're celebrating the 35th anniversary of the great Chicago Chardonnay Showdown, which is very exciting for us. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, and we're, Thank you know, you. I think what happened 35 mm -hmm. years ago really mm -hmm. is history. From um, a Croatian point of view, obviously, mm -hmm. it's, it's what gi give, gives us all and gave us all mm -hmm. then, and now it keeps giving us this hope that dreams come true. Absolutely. And no matter where mm -hmm. in the world you mm -hmm. start mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. if you have the courage to mm -hmm. follow your dream, to follow your path, you can look at this and, mm -hmm. and to affect not just to you know, have your dream come true, but then to, to make the world a better place with that dream. Right, right. Oh, that's why I love mm -hmm. uh, the story of your father, Mike, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, and you know, the reason why we're here today. Absolutely. To celebrate. Yeah. But mm -hmm. we're not going to talk about that. I want to talk about your story. Oh. I'm so used to talking about my father's story. Yes. Because it is truly amazing. It is. Mm -hmm. But you are obviously, you're a huge mm -hmm. part of mm -hmm. it as well. And mm -hmm. now you are the proprietor of Gergi mm -hmm. Estates. Mm -hmm. So how does that feel? For you? Oh, actually, pretty amazing. Because, you know, when I was growing up, I really never had an idea. And even though my father was a winemaker and we had a winery and he kept telling me that someday I would do this, I just couldn't quite imagine it. So... I started off being very, very shy and very, very introverted and didn't understand anything about business. But I always remember my father telling me that in America, you can achieve whatever you want as long as you have the will and the passion. Yes. So when he was growing up in his very small, very poor village in Croatia, uh, you know, he was one of many, many lines of Gergiches. And yes. through the family had come down that his father told him to every day do your best, every day learn something new, and every day make a friend. And that was something that I very much learned when I was growing up. That's beautiful. So. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so here you are, a little mm -hmm. girl, playing mm -hmm. in your father's... Mm -hmm. Vineyard. vineyard. Yes. Yeah. Well, when I was growing up, again, I heard stories from both of my parents, who are both Dalmatian, by the way. So, um, you know, they grew up during the war and had very, very difficult circumstances. And when I was growing up, I was raised as a Croatian. But every day I was told stories about how they were nearly killed, how they had no food to eat. Uh, my dad struggled to come to America to find a land of freedom. And so I grew up feeling very much as if I was a Croatian, but appreciating the freedom that we have in America. I, in fact, did not learn English until I was two years old. So when I went to kindergarten, I had a very heavy accent, and uh, kids used to make fun of me. But um, that feeling of always growing and always learning uh, has been with me throughout my whole life. And to this day, I don't go into my house or get into my car without thinking that I, I might not have this. You know, This was mm, something yes. that... You know, for my father, the idea of the family is very important in a family legacy and keeping the family together and passing on knowledge throughout the family. Mm. And for him, as famous as he is and as well known, his vision is for the business to continue throughout the generations. And I'm very lucky because my son, when he was seven, was very worried. He was like, Mama, 
I'm, I'm so worried. I, I want to go to college and get my master's degree in chemistry so I can work at the winery, but I can't afford it. That's a lot of money. I need to get a job. Oh, how <laughs> so, sweet. So he's already started thinking about that line, which is wonderful. Yes, and that's something I'm really curious mm -hmm. about because mm -hmm. we, we, you know, waking up in America, we explore, mm -hmm. you know, how to live your own dream and how do you know mm -hmm. sometimes so many people out there mm -hmm. live somebody else's dream mm -hmm. and we we get stuck in expectation of what we think mm -hmm. we're expected to become mm -hmm. and i've hear i hear a lot of stories of people who become lawyers or get doctor's mm -hmm. degrees because their parents mm -hmm. want them to so i'm really interested to to hear mm -hmm. because from you because you know to continue the legacy mm -hmm. that's beautiful but how does that align with your dream? Being born in the wine industry, it's an industry that people think is so romantic and uh, will, you know, give up things to come and work in the wine industry. And yeah, well, we've seen the movies. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And but it's funny, growing up, you know, that's what I knew. That's what my dad did, and he took me with him. You know, from the time I was two years old, I would go to the vineyards with him. But I had many different interests, and my dad was always telling me you have to become a winemaker. And I guess I got a little bit of that stubborn Croatian in me too. Yes. And so, you know, I had, again, many things, literature, writing, uh, archeology, span many sciences, genetic, you know, astrophysics. I was very interested in everything yeah. as well as music. And I started playing piano when I was four years old and loved music and yes. loved all the arts. In fact, I used to make a lot of my own clothes when I was very young. So um, I had all these thoughts and all that, my dad telling me, oh, you will become a winemaker. And so when time came for me to go to college, and uh, he said, I'm gonna sign, the only application I'm gonna sign is for UC Davis, and you can study viticulture and enology. So I'm like, okay. So I went to UC Davis and I studied music. And I uh, oh, studied some wow. Latin as well and took a number of courses. But, you know, I used to love reading textbooks, science textbooks for fun. And so it's not as if I didn't enjoy that part of it, but I think just the stubborn part of me was like, if my dad's telling me to do it, I, you know, I need to do my own thing. Well, so, but I yeah. guess, I mean, that, that's, that's mm -hmm. what helped you to flush mm -hmm. out then your dream to mm -hmm. just be, you know, you say stubborn, but mm -hmm. maybe it's, um, it's, you know, just the way we are, because we have right. that desire to mm -hmm. be our own. Right souls, our own person. Right. Mm -hmm. And yes, and then you mm -hmm. started music. music, mm -hmm. Which was wonderful. And I enjoyed it. And I discovered the harpsichord when I was there. So I started playing that. And of course, being a proper Croatian, I play the accordion as well. Oh, how so, fun. Yeah, it was very exciting. And, you know, I studied and then I came back to the winery and started working a little bit. And, you know, I spend most of my time in the cellar and the laboratory because I was horrifically shy, painfully shy, and in fact had severe performance anxiety. So whenever I had to play, I, my hands were shaking, my stomach. Oh. So I managed to, um, you know, do very well in the cellar, in the laboratory. And then one day my dad, I was driving my dad to a vintner dinner. And, you know, I'd known my father for many years as being an amazing speaker. You know, when he yes. spoke, people's jaws dropped open. And the stories that he told and the love that I saw yeah. being showered upon. It was just so amazing. And I just, you know, I couldn't imagine myself ever doing anything like that. And so I'm driving him to a vintner dinner and it was a hundred people, but it was sold out. So they, we had to do two dinners of a hundred people each. And the second dinner I'm driving, we just drive up and he goes, well, Violet, tonight you're going to speak about the Fumé Blanc. And my jaw dropped and my stomach went, oh, and I couldn't, I was petrified. We had a podium and a microphone. My dad gave his wonderful introduction. And I just, I came up shaking like this and I opened my mouth and nothing came out. I thought, this is it, I'm gonna die. Nothing came out. And then I, I think I said something, it was awful. And so people asked me a few questions and I could answer them. That's I had right. something, mm -hmm. I was okay. Yes. I could, don't, didn't matter how complicated it was, I could answer it. So. So for years, my father made me continue to go out and do this. And I'm like, Dad, this is awful. I'm terrible. I'm never going to learn. He says, Violet, I was painfully shy at some point. I'm like, no, how can you be painfully shy? You're amazing. He says, no, I was painfully shy. And you know what? Can you tell? I'm like, no. So keep on doing it. And now nobody knows that I'm painfully shy. And I'm so grateful to him for having exposed me to that and having taught that to me. And challenged you, and yes. Challenged and me. trust that you can do it. That's yeah. a big, huge. Yeah. So was there 
any moment in your life that you can look at because I mean it's 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 a beautiful story mm -hmm. of your father and and your story mm -hmm. and through music how you went mm -hmm. through music I just love that part because mm -hmm. I think to me yes it's very romantic to pair music and wine I mm -hmm. can't imagine anything mm -hmm. and family right. what else can mm -hmm. be um, mm -hmm. You know, for me, that's that's just really perfection. Mm -hmm. Is there any moment in your life that you had this awakening? You know, mm -hmm. that that, mm -hmm. that that something shifted mm -hmm. from the way it was mm -hmm. to this violet who you are today. I think it was a long and gradual process, and it was a culmination of many things. And I think that interest that I've always had in learning and knowing more and experiencing and having perspective and you know when I got my degree in music and I before I go to graduate school let me go back to the winery and do some work and and after a while I it slowly started realizing that I think I'm enjoying this mm. and after a few years of starting to sort of enjoy this and learning more about it I, I realized I was getting a little old and I really needed to go to graduate school and so I told my dad, Dad, I, I need to go to graduate school. I need to get my, you know, master's in music. And he was horrified. He was like, you can't leave. Oh, and I was, yeah, but Dad, I've got to leave. And yes. so anyway, um, you know, I went off. I went and studied at Indiana University. Yes. And uh, so every time I called home, he was like, when are you coming home? When are you coming home? And uh, I remember one time I'd gone to a, a wine tasting. And I met somebody who came up to me and said, oh, I was at a wine tasting last month and I met your father and my goodness, he is so proud of you. He was telling me, my daughter is getting her master's at Indiana University. And I thought, this is great. So next time I talked to my dad, I kept expecting something on the other one. When are you coming home? <laughs> so uh, I did come home after that. And I found that the more I had learned and the more areas that I explored, that, that ability to do everything and learn everything could be combined in this wonderful business that we had. And I'd never thought about business before. I thought it was dry and boring. And all of a sudden, I started realizing how interesting and fascinating it was. And so it was, you know, I remember one morning thinking, oh, you know, I can hardly wait to get to work. I've got all these things to do and all these wow. things. To do. And I was like, you know, after all those years of sort of, you know, it, it finally all came together. So yes. it was my decision and my awakening. Right, yes. And it's... it did feel like my dream, you know. I'm not doing it necessarily the way my father did it, and it is mine, but it's also part of that bigger picture. Yes. So. It mm -hmm. sounds like the moment that mm -hmm. you just opened up and kind of surrendered mm -hmm. to this blessing and the mm -hmm. gift mm -hmm. that you've been giving, mm -hmm. that you've been given. And in, in that, you know, when we do that, um, then everything, your music, it doesn't go away. It's, mm -mm. It tastes part of you. Mm -hmm. You just expand right. rather than contract. Absolutely. And that's always been my goal is to expand my perspective and to, you know, become a bigger person in that way. And, and that's part of your... able to do it. Yes, it's yeah. part of your dad's message. Every day right. learn something new mm -hmm. and make it, that's a message of expanding. Yeah. So what if you have to, if you had mm -hmm. a chance to say something to a person who's mm -hmm. maybe struggling, you know, mm -hmm. maybe um, n not knowing how to, you know, how to embrace the life that's, that's kind of mm -hmm. given to us, mm -hmm. that we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. And because a, a lot of times when we talk about awakening, mm -hmm. the first thought is, Okay, I'm packing my stuff mm -hmm. and I'm leaving, mm -hmm. starting over, mm -hmm. doing something completely different. Mm -hmm. But I think awakening, when it happens within, mm -hmm. and it just opens up your heart and, and you, you surrender to the dream, to the bigger purpose, and you mm -hmm. see the bigger picture of mm -hmm. what you do for the world, mm -hmm. then we, we don't have to mm -hmm. leave our situation. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. And, and actually... Somebody told me this a long time ago, you know, perception is reality. And that ability to be engaged in the moment and be alive in the moment, um, we talk about balance in our wines. And as a musician, there's that sense of balance and tension that you always have to get. And by our house growing up, there was a railroad track. And I used to love walking on the railroad tracks. 
And it was so hard at first to find your balance. You sort of went back and you, know, you tottered your arms about like that. But once you found that point of balance, that point, it felt infinite. It felt like no matter what direction you lean, left or right, front or back, it would hold you because it was infinite. And so that's something that I think is very hard for many people to do today. Our lives are so busy. We're always thinking about what's going to happen on the weekend. What about this thing that's due? Taking time, engaging in the present moment, and listening to yourself, that's really hard to do. It and is. when you can turn inward, create that quiet space, and listen, it will, it will tell you. It will tell you. Yes. You just have to listen. Yes, it's mm -hmm. hard to listen when we have so many voices mm -hmm. coming from all the outside, mm -hmm. and it's hard to listen and find that balance and balance when mm -hmm. you when you just have these desires and urges oh I want more mm -hmm. of this and more of that and right. more of this and mm -hmm. I want to be more with my kids I want to be mm -hmm. better mom and I want to be mm -hmm. a better career person and mm -hmm. instead of like I said finding mm -hmm. that peace within and balance I love mm -hmm. how you mm -hmm. could compare that with the balance in wine and mm -hmm. the balance in music mm -hmm. and everything's in related wine. Yeah. And again, mm -hmm. with your love for learning, mm -hmm. if you just keep open, it, the lessons are all there. Yeah, they absolutely are. You can learn something every day, every minute. And, you know, my father just turned 92, and it's fascinating to me. And I, I know the story is that, you know, the older you get, the more you find, the smarter your parents get. But I really have found that my dad lives what he says. He oh. never stops working, and he never stops learning and he's always learning something new every day, still at the age of 92. Wow. And That's it's a inspiring. great example. Yeah. Very inspiring. Mm -hmm. And Violet, mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. you have a family. Mm -hmm. Do you play music with your son? We actually do. My husband is a musician as well. Oh, wonderful. And we met at Indiana University. So he plays viola da gamba which is, uh, you know, between yes. me and him, we're the basic broke back of band. <laughs> yes. And we have people we play with that we went to school with as well. And I, I remember when I was pregnant with my son and I had this fantasy, oh my gosh, I'm gonna, uh, once I give birth, I'm gonna have all this time with my newborn son and I'm gonna be practicing eight hours a day. And um, well, things didn't quite work out that way. <laughs> and it was actually about a year before I touched the harpsichord and that's because my husband booked a gig. You just put it on the calendar. Good. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I, I've, got to, I've got to practice. <laughs> and so it was a little hard getting back into it. You get older, your muscles aren't quite what they used to be. But I think having that has been wonderful. So we've played at the winery. We've played at various other places here and there locally for Festival del Soleil, which takes place in Napa. So it's, I'm very blessed to be able to continue that. And even though I don't practice every day like I should, even the five minutes that I tell myself I will, don't always get around to it. But that ability to know that I can still pursue my passion and still yes. enjoy what I do and be living my dream and my life. Yes. It's, it's wonderful. thing that I am as a Croatian really mm -hmm. grateful for is that you um, uh, started a Croatian mm -hmm. uh, Gergic Vino, right? Mm -hmm. Vina, mm -hmm. Gergic mm -hmm. Vina. Mm -hmm. And you have a foundation for scholarships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, actually those are both my father's ideas. And when uh, Croatia became independent, he finally felt able to return to the country. And he remembers meeting with President Tudjman and he asked him, you know, Milenko, uh, you've been so successful in California. Can you help 
can you bring some of that knowledge to Croatia? And so I thought, well, what can I do? And he says, well, do what you do there. <laughs> and so he helped him actually find a beautiful location on the peninsula Pelješac, which is right on the Adriatic, which yes. is so spectacularly beautiful. Yes. Yes. And uh, he'd at that time been really thinking about the fact that Plavitz Mali, which is a native Croatian variety, might be the original Zinfandel. Right. And so in his mind, so we, we made Plavitz Mali there and also Poship, which is the mm -hmm. grapes are grown on the island of Korčula. And our first vintage was 1996 and immediately became successful there. And his idea was to have that as a kind of educational facility where he could show Croatian winemakers what he had learned along the way. Yes. So that was very special. And after a number of years, again, that, that ability to pass on knowledge, very important. And having had very little money growing up to start with, he realized how important it was to be able to help people get their education. And so he was able to fund a scholarship, actually a number of them, one at the University of Zagreb yes. uh, for wine studies there. Uh, also has a scholarship for the Culinary Institute of America and now one for the James Beard Foundation. Wow. So these are all scholarship going to furthering education in That's wine. Wonderful. And the ability to achieve your dream. Yes, absolutely. Because mm -hmm. and then and then really bring the change into the world. Because right. I really believe when we are happy, when we are mm -hmm. aligned with our dream and our purpose, mm -hmm. we do change. Mm -hmm. the, the fibers of, of mm -hmm. our world. I'm from Zagreb, mm -hmm. and so people from mm -hmm. Zagreb and mm -hmm. people from coast, we always mm -hmm. have something to argue about, oh, yes. right? Yeah. And, oh, mm -hmm. there. But one thing that mm -hmm. we all enjoy and mm -hmm. agree about mm -hmm. is our food mm -hmm. and our wine. Right. And mm -hmm. not even so much music, but no. not <laughs> music. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Thank you so yeah. much. You're Thank so you. welcome. Thank this you. was such a pleasure. Thank so. you. I hope these stories featured here on Waking Up in America are inspiring you to live your dream and then bring the change that you desire into our world. If so, please share these episodes with your friends and join us at wakingupinamerica.net and on our Facebook group, Waking Up in America. We'll see you next time.